Hey, Nika. How's it going? Oh, okay. <laughs> Every time I restart the stream, I think like, oh, did I change anything? Is it not going to work my mic this time? Lunch? That's a late lunch, man. Late breakfast. So are you going to have a late dinner as well? At like 10? I had one um, trip once, visiting family, friends, and our, our schedule like shifted so much that eventually we were like having breakfast at, I don't know, like 1 or 2 and then lunch at 4 and like dinner at like midnight. Um, it was a fun week, but not the most uh, healthy, regular uh, type type of thing. <laughs> hey, Nico. Oh, seven or eight is very, very. Um, what's it called? I'm I'm only finding like the Dutch words hoppelijk right now, which means reasonable. I guess reasonable. That's the best word. So Nika, did you get invited for any Sinterklaas festivities this weekend? Your food schedule is chaos. Well, as long as you feel good about it, then it doesn't really matter. Oh, 
Oh, congratulations! The big 3 0. Did you have um, family coming over or friends? No, wait, that's the coolest when that stuff happens. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of them. So did your friend just join in on the plans? Did you go out on the town partying? Oh god, I still need to turn off that bot. Let me do that right now, because that's annoying. It's really not that bad, Vico. I am 32. Yes, yes, I'm 32 and I survived. <laughs> I survived the, th the big 3 0. Uh, Naturalis is awesome. It used to be like my favorite It's um, museum when I was a kid. Let me finish my hands. It used to be my favorite museum as a kid and I still think it's really freaking awesome. And I wish I went there more often. Yeah, just go with the flow with your age. Don't worry about it too much. You're only as old as you feel and stuff. Right? I, do they do they still have um? Uh, they used to have it where like you you went like all the way downstairs, and there was like a giant um, whale skeleton, but then there was also this huge um, like planetarium installation where you could see like our I think it was our solar system um, that they showed with like humongous. Uh, rings of planets moving around. sold out. Hmm. That's interesting. The, the, the planetarium thing was like always 
just like part of the museum. There was no extra ticket required or anything. Um, maybe they like moved it around. Oh, a dinosaur experience. I do know we saw, what's the T-Rex skeleton called? Like Trixie or something, probably. Um, I think we did see her. I'm not sure if they have like animatronics and stuff, but that sounds really cool. I think I'd like to go back soon then to just check it out again. Thanks for the great idea. Maybe we'll be able to bring our nephew. He's not super into dinosaurs, but I think. <laughs> Good, I remembered. One of my, um, one of my, my, my employer from like, uh, a couple of years ago, the Banquier de Loterij, I think they um, sponsored like the the purchase of it or something. Or I don't know. There was like some some big to do about it um, while I was working there. I think it it was because they were like opening up the um, the exhibit and like. The, uh, my employer kind of like worked, like funded part of it or something. Yeah, it, uh, those were cool days. Lots of cool projects being funded. Honestly, I still really like the employer and everything they do. Like, I also got to, um, one of the highlights was uh, me uh, doing a speech in front of like George Clooney, um, sitting like, I don't know, 10 meters away from me or something in, in like the first row and I was on stage because uh, they have this um, annual gala where they um, announce like uh, where all the funding is funding is going for that year um, and then in, in like later years they um, let um, players from uh, in the lottery and also like employees they let them announce which projects they were going to fund um, and so I got to like announce one of the projects. It was for Wired Child, I think, yeah. Um, where they were going to like fund the reintegration of like child soldiers into their normal lives again. And that was really one of the highlights uh, of of my time there, I think. But yeah, they did uh, cool stuff like that. Yeah, it was uh, pretty cool. I think that was the biggest the biggest speech I've ever given in front of like, I don't know, probably 600 people or something. Of course we, you know, we got the text delivered to us so we didn't have to write anything ourselves. <laughs> we could adjust it, um, you know, cause, so we wouldn't be like try stumbling over words we never use, but we had to say the right things, of course. But yeah, that was really cool. It was, I had like a, the scariest part was what, where I had like a blank moment. So I was, I had been practicing like my lines a lot um, to make sure that I could like do them by heart. And I could do them by heart like in the car. 
driving home or whatever. But then once I stood there and I was like, oh my God, George Clooney is like sitting right there and he's looking at me and what do I do? And um, I had like a, a brief moment where I was like, crap. And then I remember my lines and I was able to like deliver them. And um, I think it went well enough. It's actually, it's, it's on the internet somewhere still, I think. Um, so I can share it at one point, but um, it was pretty cool. It it wasn't it was um it wasn't like completely by heart, but um, you you wanted to not be looking down all the time, you know? Um, so I just like wanted to know it by heart and then be able to, like if I, if I would forget everything, then, then I would have looked at the cards and, um, you know, delivered the, the appropriate lines anyway, but, um, I didn't want to be looking down at my cards all the time. And that's what I tend to do if I don't know it well enough. So I prefer to just rehearse. Even though, you know, then the chance of um, blacking out is a bit bigger if you're not used to actually standing on stage. So, oh wait, Nazarales, did you go out for dinner after Nazarales? I was gonna ask, like, what did you do? But I already knew. Man, this is where the scene gets a little hairy because drawing a lot of characters. Oh, nice. So you have like a full, a full weekend of birthday celebrations as it should be when you turn 30. Man, that's so nice though that she came over. Yeah, I get that. If you're out and about for a long time, then it's nice to just 
curl up into your comfort zone again for a while, huh? It's kind of funny how socializing can be like more draining than um, just working sometimes. This looks a bit weird because I was, this is going to be all painted and I'm not sure what I want to line out and what I want to, oh, go away, what I want to keep in sketch form for now. Oh my gosh. I'm glad you did though, because now we can talk about it. Oh no, we can't, because Negan still needs to see it. It's, I, I honestly, I thought it was, um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, oh, no, go away. No, no, go away. Um, I'm actually, the, like the, I'm, I'm really, I'm really curious. No, I won't spoil it. I'm really curious to see the rest. That's, that's what I'll keep it at. <laughs> no, it's fine. We won't, we won't talk about it. Um, I, uh, um, I enjoyed watching it. Though I agree with, uh, with Miko that it, it, um, slows down a bit in the middle. That's all I'll say about it. But I'm excited for next season. Yeah, it's... That was, uh, that was a bit of a weird one for me where it was like am i watching the right series <laughs> oh hey rick yeah i get that the middle I would say, like, I would really call it, like, the boring middle. But I do think at the end of episode six, it really, really uh, picks up again. And I was, like, wanting to, to um, binge the rest. So if you're willing, I would recommend just watching the whole thing. Though Miko didn't like it, so no. Oh. To each their own, I guess. But I liked it. Honestly, though, um, like the whole st Sandman story, <laughs> I was I was watching like all the all the story elements with like um, people falling asleep and stuff, and I was like, oh, this has a lot of 
I, I swear I've never seen Sandman before or read the books or whatever, but um, it had a lot of um, similarities with Nether Realms. It was, um, which was kind of like, I, I guess, like on the positive side, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, I guess I have like something to refer to if I need to like explain Nether Realms to someone. It's like, well, it's kind of like Sandman, except more, hmm, I'd say more Disney ish. More, more like Disney Pixar DreamWorks ish. Let's see if you guys agree when I have like a few uh, chapters up. This is going to be just about the car, which I'm not going to ink because it's going to be painted, but just for my own reference. What's a solid elevator pitch? Like Sandman, but more Disney? <laughs> Except for when they don't know Sandman, then it kind of like falls apart, unfortunately. I honestly, I uh, I, I I stole that trick from um, publishers. They uh, when they um, um, when they're promoting like a book, they always like comp. I think, I think that's the technical term for it. They, they comp other uh, books. Um, so I was like, how can I comp Nether Realms to give it like a really quick um, anchor point, I guess, to like show what Nether Realms is about. So I think I think we have like completely opposite. honestly Miko if if you didn't like Sandman I'm wondering if you'll like Nether Realms I I would be really curious for you to like read more of the comic and then just let me know uh, what you think of my writing and my characters though I guess. Hmm. I'm thinking like, are my characters more likable? Maybe. I think they're probably like easier to understand. <laughs> I hated the guy with the sunglasses. But more like, I would just like hate him in real life and everything he stood for, so. So Rick, your name is familiar for, to me, but I'm not sure from where. How did you find this stream?
know. Good to know. Thanks for the compliment on my work. So you found me on Twitter and Mastodon. <laughs> it's kind of funny how uh, how much overlap um, the two have still. Glad you joined and thanks for like um, joining in on the on the chatter because it gets a little awkward if you're talking to yourself or not talking, just drawing for yourself for hours on end. Yeah, I've been liking Mastodon so far though. Um, like the engagement has been like dropping off for me a little. Um, especially like compared to how many followers I have on there right now compared to, um, compared to like my new account on Twitter, but we'll see how it goes. Like I've also been a lot of doing a lot of like Patreon, um, uh, promotion, which, you know, isn't really like the most engaging stuff, of course, cause it's just like a lot of yelling, but. Hopefully with um, some, uh, you know, just like more being on there organically just for fun um, will change things. Yeah, I feel like my, uh, my, um, what's it called? Stream timeline is like very pretty empty. Like I look on there and I see like, I don't know, maybe four to 10 new posts or something. Um, which, you know, you're done with pretty soon. So that's a bit sad, but you know, maybe it'll, I don't know, pick up, pick up again or something. I've been actually thinking about like um, trying out dice.camp instead of like mastodon.art. I'm not sure if it'll make like a huge difference or anything, but I'm still not totally clear on if um, if being on a different server actually matters that much. Yeah, Miko, I, I kind of get what you mean. Um, though I do feel like the Sandman did get a lot more layers as the as the show went on. Um, I think I think like the the show is pretty like surrealist compared to a lot of shows that we know. Um, and like Neil Gaiman's writing, I noticed it in, in Good Omens too. I, th I think we like talked about it last time as well, where in Good Omens and like any of his writing, it, it feels like a lot of, you're dropped into like a lot of scenes um, where you're not sure what's going on or why you're there. Um, which which makes it kind of like well like I said surreal and hard to like character care about the characters and then all of a sudden you see it like all kind of like uh, link up and then you're like then you have like an aha moment but um, it's a long it's a pretty long wait for sure um, I definitely get where you're coming from. I definitely understand if you if you would say that you didn't like it. Did you see like a? Because I know there was a show or something. I I read the book. I didn't. Um, I didn't like see any show or something. Or was it a movie?
Okay. I, I haven't seen it, so I won't be able to comment on that one. But do you agree that, like, a lot of scenes feel very random until they're suddenly not in his writing? Maybe they're comparable if if book readers think the show was good. I feel like it's kind of a, I don't know, it's it's not for every audience, I feel. I, so I can definitely understand if, if people are turned off about it by it because I do need to, I guess, invest in it for a while and like allow myself to be confused for a while, um, which is kind of tough if you're like so used to, you know, having everything spoon fed to you all the time um, and like knowing what's going on all the time and just waiting to see what the next step is. But I'm uh, right now I'm reading um, Norse mythology from Gaiman. Yeah, I agree. It's it, it is purposeful. It's just like you really need to be comfortable with, you know, not going, not knowing what's going on for a while. Um, and honestly, I feel, I feel like a lot of the times I don't like it. Um, I don't like it with like. That's why I don't like a lot of. Um, I guess modern art <laughs> where there's like a lot of figuring it out um, a lot of reading into context before you like, understand what the artist was trying to say and that kind of stuff and generally I'm more of a school of like it needs to be instantly clear what's happening or else you're not doing your job. I'm not sure why I'm giving Neil Gaiman a pass, but I am for some reason. Um, I do like Norse mythology, <laughs> also because it's more, um, though, um, it's also like, it's not, it's obviously adapted from like old storytelling where it's like, um, I guess like the short sentences, you know, where like, oh, and then he does this and that was the way it's always been. And it's like that really old uh, storytelling that he that he uses which is like fine because it's a retelling of like the old um, mythologies uh, which is I would say I'm mostly reading it for like the 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 easy access to retellings and not so much for like the prose <laughs> um, prose as in like the the buildup of the sentences and stuff But it's fun to compare it to like the Loki and the um, Thor and stuff and um, Odin that you know from like the MCU and then seeing how it differs from the actual legends. Well, uh, Nika, I think it's very uh, um, liberal of you to like 
like um, letting go of that kind of storytelling, even though you're very perfectionistic in your own taste of storytelling. Like if I'm paraphrasing that right, it's kind of funny where you like it because it takes you out of your comfort zone. It's not a lot of people who do. Oh, do you also already like? Did you already know the uh, the the mythology, right? Like the base of uh, of mythology. Because I'm just like reading about um, all that stuff for the first time. Like I, the only thing that I knew was like, well, basically every everything that they kind of like touched upon in. Um, uh, in the MCU, but I never did any of my own reading on Norse mythology or anything. Okay, what's the most over-the-top thing that you've read in the stories, Vic? Now I need to know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying, Nick. I like, it's kind of funny that you're, you're glad that it forces you to get out of your comfort zone because not a lot of people like that. Oh, I'm probably not there yet. Uh, the 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 um, uh, I've read Norse mythology until the story where um, Loki gets like the six gifts for um, uh, for like the gods. That's the thing with like those old stories. It's kind of funny how. <laughs> There never seemed to be like really any consequences. Whereas like, oh, we'll cut off your head. Head. Oh no, I guess we won't. And then, okay, that's it. Um, which I guess works in like the the old like language where like, oh, and they tried to cut off Loki's head, but they couldn't, and therefore he lived ever after. Um, but then seeing it, seeing the the dialogue and the and the humanization that Neil Gaiman tries to do, it's kind of weird that the uh, that the consequences doesn't don't happen. Um, so yeah, uh, to uh, come back to your uh, remark, I haven't read about Thor drinking half the ocean, but he's a god, like. Why would he? Why would he not be able to drink half the ocean? Like for mythology, I totally get that. That's fine. I don't really consider mythology like that spoilers. I don't think it'll uh, 
influence his um, uh, his character development much. I think the weird thing about like, you know, if I can talk about like the the, the stories that I do know uh, or have read, um, I thought it was kind of weird how um, Thor wakes up next to his wife, being like, "Oh my God, you lost your hair! I'm gonna fix it for you." And then once he gets Mjolnir, he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, it's fixed. Okay, cool." It's like, um, okay. That that seems like. W why is there not more attention for? That makes me think Thor's an ass. eating my Sinterklaas chocolate, which is delicious. <laughs> yeah, Thor does seem really dim. Which is kind of nice from a myth standpoint, I guess, where it gives like every character some um, some strengths, but also so some flaws. I guess it just from the story doesn't it didn't really feel um, what's it called consistent. Just because in the start at the start of the story, it seems like he cares for his wife's honor a lot and then later on he doesn't um, which seems kind of weird I think at least I'd be pissed off at my husband for not caring more but also like weirded out being like I thought you cared so much why do you not why are you not paying attention to me Hey Miko, what did you mean with like weird I'm seeing art on Twitter again? not here anymore. Oh, really? Oh, hi. You're still here. <laughs> Really? It used to show you people you don't follow a lot? It wasn't like, I, I did notice um, somehow the ads were like more noticeable for me after like the takeover, but I'm not sure if that was just me being more sensitive about, about it or if I was really seeing more, more ads. I felt just like I think the top, if you go to Twitter, like the first thing you, I used to see, let's see if it's still the case. Yeah, for a while, the first thing I used to see was it like an ad at the top instead of like pe person, a, a person I was following. That was freaking weird. Oh. 
And right now, I'm not seeing any ads. Maybe it's just my ad blocker then. Huh. Oh, Miko, you know you can you can mute words, right? I've uh, I've muted a lot of um, words that I don't want to follow, like American politics. Like sometimes, like they're vaguely interesting, but uh, obviously we don't have we have less to do with them than than actual people living in the states. So I have a lot of words muted that um, have to do with that. It makes my Twitter experience a lot more pleasant. Well, Miko, time to add some words to that list, I guess. Let me check, actually, because I'm, I'm not seeing any ads in, in my feed right now. What is happening? Not sure why that is. Oh, really? Th does that help? Using only lists? I felt like it was kind of useless for me to start using a list because I would just be adding all the people I follow to one list because it's only artists. <laughs> Oh, it has no ads? That's interesting. <laughs> but, Miko, did the... Um, did the pictures of... Did the tweets that contained the pictures with Elon, did they um, contain the words Elon Musk? Because then, you know, words are have obviously have no not like they're not really useful if the pictures are just um, of him but not describing him because then that's what they could have used AI for to emit those those kinds of tweets so the characters that I'm sketching Rick um, these uh, the the woman and later the the guy that's like being dragged out of uh, out of the car right here, they're um, people that are about to die, sadly, um, not by their hand. They've actually kind of like already died. And um, red and blue here 
Um, they are basically angels of death. Um, and um, they're going to bring them to the other side. Um, they're just not kind of like, they still need to come to terms with the fact that they're, um, that they're dead. Um, and they get one last wish uh, that red and blue will fulfill for them in exchange for the use of their bodies because um, as you can see from this page, no, this page, hold on, let me open it. As you can see from this page, they don't interact with um, our earth. Like they interact in terms of like being heard and being seen and being able to stop time um, and uh, make it uh, move again. But they can't actually interact with um, with like objects, which is making their search for a certain character very difficult. So um, they're giving people one last wish um, in exchange for like their bo the use of their bodies for a day, which is what this scene is um, showcasing right now. Have you read the comic at all, Rick? It's like on Patreon, but it's also on Tapas and um, Global Comics. It's se secretly also on Webtoon, but I'm kind of like not advertising that one because I just want to see... I'm honestly looking to um, build up more of an audience on Tapas or Global Comics. Or maybe like my own website in due time. Um, but um, yeah, it's also on Webtoon just to see how far it will go with just like uploading pages and then seeing who's interested. Hold on, let me give you a link. Uh, wait, I'll give you this one because not all the pages are uploaded. I'm like uploading um, the pages over the coming weeks on like Tapas, but uh, let's see. We'll just do newest. So this one has like all the pages. All the pages are public. There we go. Oh gosh. Hold on. Why? Okay, so copy that and like add the tag thing. Because um, that's going to like sort out the, the right pages and then top us. Oh gosh, there we go. I will have to find the link because I'm not logged in. There we go. This has... Oops. Uh, um, I have like part of the pages uploaded on top of us um, and they're going to be fully uploaded, I think, in, let's see, six, in three weeks, I think. Um, but if you want to like read all the pages that I have now, you can read them on Patreon. Yeah, it's, I've been like, I'm not, I wasn't really sure what to do in terms of like, I, I was like, I could upload all the pages at once, um, and then go directly into a hiatus on there, or I could, um, like upload like the first few pages and then 
um, upload one a week to give myself some a bit more time to like finish this scene that I'm working on right now. Um, and then like being able to move on fairly quickly, maybe to to these pages. Um, so yeah, I opted for like not doing everything at once, but then but now it's creating a bit of a discrepancy between um, what's uploaded on Patreon and like actually available and um, and what's on top us or webtoon or whatever. So. You know, it'll like it'll catch up. It won't. It won't always be like asynchronous, um, because I I I will be publish publishing like the pages at at the same rate on every platform as one once they're like free for everyone. Patrons get do get like first dibs. They get like early access. But um, all the rest, all the public pages, will go up. On the same, at the same time. Oh, so you do prefer to read on web webtoons? It's it's kind of funny. I've um, maybe I should just advertise on webtoons, but I um, I put it on there because I know it's like it's so popular. Um, it's just that I I read that they're um, discontinuing like their creator support programs. Um, and like with the whole the whole thing with all the like the advertising they were doing, <laughs> um, kind of like discrediting their their creators, their hardworking creators. I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to. I would I would like another platform to be my main platform. But um, if you guys prefer to read on Webtoon, then by all means, read it on Webtoon. Yeah, this, have you seen like the the billboards? They were like I think they were advertising in it was either Korea or Indonesia or something or maybe the states, not here anyway. Um but they were like um look at this amazing side hustle and then using I don't know, I think it was like Lore Olympus or some other crazy big webtoon thing that was like a main job a lot of work to actually update enough to be like a, a partner or whatever it's called. And then it's like, look at this side hustle. It's like, excuse me, this is my job. <laughs> this is my life's work. What are you calling this a side hustle for? Um, and that was Webtoons itself. Um, so that's why I'm kind of like, mm. along with um, um, the creator thing. Um, with them like de um, demonetizing basically their their partner program. What did I do here? Like I have sketches and scribbles here, but I'm not sure what what they're supposed to depict. I like. I like Tapas website. I think it's um, a bit more um, what you call it. I guess I guess Western friendly, um, in the sense that I understand the the website better, where it's all supposed to go and stuff. With Webtoon, there's this weird thing that happens where. Um, I have to click like, I don't know, five times or something to get where I want to go. Maybe it's just me not understanding the website, but... get my own drawing now. Jesus.
if I can give you a tip to read on tapas. I really like Forgotten Sons. It's been going for a long time. They're, um, and they're still updating, but it's also like a lot of content already, a lot of pages. And I don't think she's on webtoons. I cannot wait for the day that I have like <laughs> enough pages finished where I can just say like, go read the comic. You'll understand what it's about. But right now I'm still explaining a bunch of stuff just because there's not enough story out there to actually show to people. Um, you can gain, you, you get, can get revenue from like ads things. So that's the one thing from Webtoon where they, they had, um, some kind of like revenue sharing thing on Webtoon. If you had like, I don't know, 50,000 views a month and, and at least so many subscribers, but that's like one thing they're discontinuing. So they're actually like taking away a big paycheck from, uh, from creators, uh, and they're replacing that with, um, like ad revenue sharing or something. Um, I'm not totally clear yet on what that would actually mean. Um, and I think they were trying to compensate it by like, um, you know how there's like this uh, patron support thing on Webtoon. Um, they were like, we're gonna give you more opportunities to actually direct people towards your own platform to make money, you know, for like merch and stuff. And, um, it's kind of like, well, you know, I had a paycheck, like an $800 paycheck before, and now you're taking it away from me again. Um, so that kind of sucks. And for tapas, um, I think you could do something with ink. Um, but honestly, I'm not totally sure. Right now, I'm mostly focusing on like getting the story out there because that's a lot of, um, I'm not sure like how long you've been following me exactly, but um, I, I was like struggling with, um, I would say like people not responding to me asking for more support for the story um, and I was like, what am I doing wrong? I don't get it. Um, and I, I asked, like, I, I just put that on the internet, like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, so what I'm doing wrong, so what, what can you tell me? And uh, a lot of people were like, well, I don't, I don't even know what the story is, so what are you, what are you trying to tell me? Um, so right now I'm just trying to get the story out there, basically, and Hopefully, um, people will love the story so much that they're 
trying to that they that they want to support it. Um, and then my main avenue so far has been through uh, Patreon. Um, but it's so far it's mostly been like people who have been able to see through me stumbling about, uh, but also like making the illustrations for Another Realms. So the the you know the illustrations that you've seen on on Twitter and um, uh, and on Mastodon, I actually have like a whole website uh, with all the illustrations collected over there, you know. Hold on, let me pull that up and link it real quick. There we go. So that's just like all the illustrations that I made so far. And I started in, I want to say, August 2020. I think there's like 20 illustrations right there. And they all have like um, small story snippets. Um, that are either world building and a few of them are like actual parts of the story. Um, but not too many. It's mostly world, world building so far. Um, and then the comic is like me actually venturing into the actual story for the first time. That's a whole ramble for one, one question, isn't it? Oh yeah, let me go take a break to get some tea real quick. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good first one to see, Rick. <laughs> it's a popular one. Love it too. Hold on, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. But, uh, oh yeah, so the, that's what I was going to say, the, the door with the eye is uh, one of the illustrations I uh, lead with a lot of the time because it just it speaks to the imagination so much, somehow it works really well, it's very popular. You know, compared to my other work. No, I think I don't have a favorite character just because I know um, a lot of their... I've written, I've tried to write them as dimensional as possible, meaning like they all have like good, good uh, traits and bad traits, you know, as any person does. Um, red hair for example the dog guy um he's like charismatic and uh what's it called amicable like friendly um but he can have like his head in the clouds too and be kind of like brash and um uh, i imagine him to be very vain um and then his brother, Blue, the owl guy, is very standoffish. Um, but he's also like a very straight arrow um, that like tries to do what he believes is right for people, which is kind of, kind of like comes forward in one of these pages. Where is it? Nope, that's... Yeah, um, here where like his the wife of the of the guy like bears down on him for doing something wrong and then Blue, you know, uh, gets between them like, listen, there's nothing you can do, just forgive each other because that will give you both the, like the most peace. Um, and then my main character, because these aren't even the main characters, um, they, um, Nergui, she's, she's like super insecure, um, and needs to like do a lot of growing, so, um, I'm more wondering if like at the start people are going to be like, geez, what a whiner, and then, you know, as she grows, people might like her better. Oh, that would have been a good idea, Nika. Um, they're called red and blue because I had I had them like called um, ebony and ivory back when they were still human formed, um, which is kind of funny too. Let me see if I can find those real quick. Um, let me see. Doot doot. doot. I was just like, um, I was brainstorming names and somehow, um, 
giving them like names that weren't red and blue just seemed like not fitting. Uh, where are they? Natives, 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 natives. Oh man, the art is so old that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it again. Or am I? Hold on. Yes. No. Yes. No. Oh, yes. Here they are. There we go. That's one. That's two. These used to be red and blue. Um, but then ebony and ivory. Um, just didn't feel right somehow. I just felt like they were they would be called red and blue kind of like ironically. Um, just because like their aunt no mother is also very like standoffish and I don't care that much except for like she only cares about like the super big picture. Um, which is her, by the way, I do have a more recent illustration of her. This is their mom. I call her Tom. Um, and, uh, they're actually the only two angels of death, uh, because they're, uh, she is the ruler of death. There are three domains. Um, this, uh, she's, um, she's death, this is time, and then there's also Tallulah, um, who I don't have a full illustration for, but I do have a sketch. Oh, actually, um, I do kind of have a full illustration, namely this one, this Tallulah. Um, so they're basically three sisters that rule over uh, the nether, nether realms. Um, and she's gone. Um, deceased, unfortunately. Um, and so red and blue are like her sons. Um, and so since, since she rules over the death domain, they're her angel, angels of death, basically. Thanks. So the time went, this is like the actual, actually the first illustration I ever made for Nether Realms. Uh, Tallulah was uh, in charge of dreams. So it's dreams, death, and time. Um, and the scribes um, from the dream world, uh, dream realm, um, or from the Nether Realms, I, I should say, they report to her. Um, she has like a, a big archive library of everything that's ever happened um, and she like um, looks through it through the lifelines of people, which are these things. These are the lifelines of people uh, that connect them to the nether realms. Um, so yeah, they're sisters and they're two angels of death, basically. In conclusion. Which is, which is why I'm saying like, there's there's like a lot a lot to this story that I haven't like been able to show people. I'm just somehow not really good at it. But then once I you know once people start asking questions, uh, I basically can't shut up about it. Coined the pitch here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is showing me that <laughs> it could work. It's memorable. Yeah, there's a actually 
on like the uh, the all discoveries um, page thing. Um, you know, like I, I I personally enjoy reading about lore more in um, in an actual uh, in the actual story. But if you just want to like read tidbits, then um, I have uh, like a kind of like wiki with uh, with stuff. Uh, which is with just short tidbits um, in the All Discoveries page. It's there if you want to check it out. I'm gonna put that on social media later. We coined a new pitch for Nether Realms on stream today. It's like Sandman, Sandman but more Disney. So Nika, have you been streaming lately? I don't think I've seen any announcements floating around. Though I have been taking a bit of a social media break after finishing up the promo for the Patreon. Oh, really? Yeah, it, d it does take... Honestly, though, I was going to say, like, it takes it takes a lot out of you, but honestly, since um, ever since the first stream, when I, like, got out, got over the nerves, um, I've been a lot more, like, relaxed uh, on the streams, and I've been... Uh, they've taken a lot less energy out of me ever since the first one. Like with the first one I was like, oh my god, I don't know if I can if I can do this. Um, and then I did it once more and then uh, it was kind of like, oh okay. That doesn't, that wasn't as hard as the first time. That was a lot easier already. Though honestly, you guys have been amazing and like showing up and being supportive and chatting so I don't feel like I'm drawing for no one. <laughs> but you've been busy Nika, like finishing up a lot of commissions from what I've heard so It's tough to, uh, you do need like some, some time to actually be able to focus on something that you can show. You get very intense about being 100% about both talking and drawing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think for the foreseeable future, I don't think I'll be like 
doing any sketching or something or or um like modeling in 3d on stream just because talking takes a lot of concentration um as you know so <laughs> i can't do much more than ink or flat and even then you know when i'm like searching for uh for a file or whatever you can already tell that i'm like going into my like i did, did just now like uh, pausing, thinking about what I'm going to say, what am I doing again. So yeah, I totally get that. It, it does take a lot of concentration and you definitely can't do both. Unless it's like a no-talk stream, but then I personally think it's less, less fun to stream. Yeah, it has been fun to hang. Like, I've really been enjoying just like actually t having conversations with people, um, which happens in other places, of course, but um, it's nice to get to know people who, you know, who are following your work and stuff. So you kind of like know who's seeing your work all the time. Yeah, exactly. It um, feels like a very low-key... There's actually... I was just like... Uh, well, while I was getting tea, I was... Um, uh, I saw a tweet from someone um, saying, only two people came to my author signing yesterday, so I was pretty bummed about it, especially as 37 people responded going to the event. Kind of upset and a little embarrassed. It's like... Oh my god, I feel that so bad. <laughs> it's so scary to put yourself out there. But I feel like streaming um, is like a pretty low-key... As long as you're not too stressed about like um, being either productive on stream or um, having like loads of people there every time. I feel like it's a very easy, or easy, like a very low-key um, way for people to get to know you and for you to get to know the people that like your art. But it is a little scary every time where you like Especially since I don't want to stream outside of office hours, just because, you know, I won't, um, as a rule, I don't really work pat after dinner, um, because it, like, really impacts my sleep. Um, so that, you know, leaves out a lot, a whole audience, usually, of, um, United States people, which can be a bit scary since that's where the largest part of my audience is, so I never really know if I'm streaming like during office hours on uh, in my own time if somebody's going to show up. Maybe, can you imagine how unproductive they are <laughs> off stream then? <laughs> no, that's mean. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do they like not chat maybe?
Because, yeah, I get that you're not, like, there's more, um, you feel more accountable. Like, you need to, you need to, well, like you said, stay on task, but. Oh, yeah. I guess that works, too. So sometimes, I don't know, like I feel, feel sometimes there are just like puzzles that you need to solve, you know? I'm not really sure how, how you do those without, um, without concentrating for a bit. Here I go, like being like, oh, I need to draw this fold. And then I start repeating myself because <laughs> Can't think of what to say anymore. Right, using less brain and more intuition for art. I would say Tough one. Um, I'm not sure if perfectionism... For me it's a tough one because I feel like perfectionism does come from intuition for me. Instead of... Um, instead of more from like my right side analytical brain. Because if, if I get like analytical, um, I feel like I'm pretty able to distinguish like or say to myself like okay so I've spent this long on art uh on the art that's what they paid for it's good um like it's up to standard for what they paid for so I should be able to let this go um and that's like my rational side taking over and then when I'm like being perfectionistic I feel like yeah but it could be so much better and I want to like make better art and um what if I like start over and do it again and like um, change the composition or whatever? And that's like me being super intuitive about it. But then my 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 rational side it takes over. Like, no, you need to be free to work on other art for other clients. So stop working on this. Yeah, um, I'll be curious to hear which one it is for you, how that works. So yeah, I, I guess extra kudos for uh, for people um, who are able to be more productive on stream. Yeah. So Rick, actually, um, the commission commissions are like how I mainly um, provide for my income. Uh, so the comic right now, um, I earn like a hundred bucks a month or something from that, um, which is by far not enough to live off of, as you will probably know. Um, so right now I'm mostly um, working on commissions for, for people to like pay my bills. Uh, so I do like D&D &D characters and uh, sometimes just like um, group portraits of people or book covers, that kind of stuff. Um, and I also um, sell like D and D art packs for people that aren't able to commission me. Um, 
where I, I created like a, a pack. Hold on. A picture says it speaks more than a thousand words. So let me just show a picture. Um, these art packs are like, um, whoops. Oh, there we go. Are like, um, um, there's like a, a character pose and like a, um, it's focused on like a character class, but then, um, you're able to, uh, customize like the hair, the eyes, the clothing, some of the weapons, uh, and like the skin tone and stuff. Um, to give people like an option to customize uh, their character without like having to commission me for, I don't know, well, this is 340 euros worth. Um, so that's basically how, uh, uh, how I, you know, try to make a living. <laughs> it's not really working, but um, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it paid the bills for me last year. This year it's been tough, tougher. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's not, um, let me put it like this. 15 year old me never thought I would get a hundred euros a month to make a comic. That's amazing. Or not, it's not like, a, it's like a hundred dollars before, before, conversions and, and, and Patreon fees, I think, or whatever, but whatever. It's just about that. Um, so um, in that sense, uh, I'm really proud. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, um, it's just, I would love to work on Netherrealms more just because I feel like it's been going so slow now uh, because I need to um, every time, you know, a commission comes in, it basically, um, gets first dibs on my time. Um, I do set aside some, some part of my time for, uh, for Nether Realms because I, I do want to, like, keep it moving forward and I do feel a responsibility towards patrons to keep producing, you know, content, um, for them and for, for me, too. Um, but you know, a hundred bucks is basically like two hours a month. Um, so I need to make sure that I can pay my bills first. Yeah, exactly. That's, um, I feel like, you know, with commissions, like eventually your, your, your time is like booked for the month and you're not able to take on any more work. Um, which basically like puts a cap on what you're able to earn. Um, and with all the responsibilities that come from, uh, that come with like being an artist or like an, a business owner, um, that's not a whole lot of time left to actually do the work for me, I feel like. So, you know, having the comic and having the art packs and stuff, it's a way for me to put the story out there, like Nether Realms, and it's also a way for me to provide something for people who don't have, like, the funds to commission me. Um, but it's also a way for me to create some income that, you know, doesn't really depend on my time, per se. Um, as in, like, once it's out there, you know, people that want to grab it can grab it, and I don't need to be there specifically um, to do it for them, because I've already done it. So, yeah, let's hope... Um, you were asking, like, how it's selling? Um, the... the um, God, here I go again. Let me think. Thinking and drawing at the same time. Um, the female elf pack did better than the guys. Uh, which is funny because I was kind of 
uh, thinking that the guys will be more popular with more people playing guys, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, and um, people are still responding though. Uh, and like the bundle was pretty popular. Like I did a Cyber Monday, Black Friday bundle thing uh, where, you know, people, a lot of people bought it. So I made like 40 bucks. Um, so that was nice. And I'm really curious to just see um, how it scales because I, I also feel like people are responding to it pretty um, positively. So I feel like there's something there. Um, but they're not, you know, actually doing the transaction. So I'm wondering if it'll look cooler or like be more useful if there's like multiple classes, um, more options per character, maybe like more hairstyles or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking to, in the time that I have next year, uh, to actually spend some time making more of the packs and then see if it like catches on. Well, Miko, uh, let me put it like this. You've had more returning clients than I ever had. I've never had a returning client before. That's not true. Um, my, my previous work um, was a returning client. I have one returning client. Two. No, two. But they were not this year. They were over the past four years. Look at us one-upping ourselves, Miko. Well, you know, Miko, if you don't like the freelancing, then, like, I'm not joking. You can always go back to um, being employed. I've actually thought about it really hard um, the past couple weeks. About just, like, dropping art and going back into some kind of employment. Just because it's like, oops, way more stable and, oops, um, kind of know what you're, what you're up against, I guess. Yeah, coworkers are uh, are nice. I feel like um, having our artist group really helps with that. 
Um, I do feel like you're basically like my co-workers. Um, but um, it's nice to have like more involved people, like people working on the same project to like have, to actually bounce off of, to, ba to bounce ideas off of, and they actually like know uh, <laughs> what project you're working on. Um, So it's kind of interesting, like, do you think their video editing is like a salary job, Nika? So because I, I, I was under the impression that video editing is also like kind of like a gig thing. Yeah, that used to be one of my goals too, to have a, a co-working space. I'm not so sure now, just because I'm really enjoying not having to <laughs> go out the door. Look at me being a hermit, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, at least as long as it's like some some form of stability then that's great you know i'm honestly still not sure like i i guess for me it's like i still have uh some savings to like do this full time for now but then if that runs out then i'll have to see what i'll do if i can you know either i'll Maybe I can make it work with like a part-time job. <laughs> or maybe I'll just like quit art. I don't know. I really don't know. we'll also have to see how that um, AI thing works out. Did you see, by the way, that um, Clip decided to not implement the AI thing? With a really neat apology too, like a really... They really acknowledged um, what was going on and that they understood the feedback that they were getting. Which was really cool. What would I do if I don't have an art career? Um, I'm not sure. I feel I'm like I've I've said it before, but like I'm a data nerd. Um, I love spreadsheets and like analyzing data and um, having that make sense. Um, so maybe I would try to do something like that. Or um, if I had to like do a, like a whole career switch thing, it would e yeah, it would either be that or um, something related to um, sustainability. So like maybe being on the back end for like solar panel installers or um, insulation, that kind of stuff. Not sure, honestly. Yeah, I'm not sure like data analysis, I'm not sure what kind of job that is. <laughs> Um, data analyst. I'm not sure if I'd like that as a job. I'm not, I, I only know the job title. Um, 
I don't know if if it's if it's a thing that's actually that people if people are actually like able to make money in it. I'm not sure. What would you do though if you didn't have art for as a career? If you could just um I know you've been looking at the video editing, but oh well, then maybe I should be just be become a data analyst for like two days a week and then do uh, do another arms on the side. <laughs> but then that would probably mean going back to school, probably. What's the what does the job entail though, like? What is it? What is it? What is it? What do you have to do as a data analyst? I, I honestly have no idea. I'm thinking I probably have a very romanticized image of it. A lot of data crunching specific software used to write reports. Hmm. Sounds like something I could do. If shit hits the fan, maybe I'll maybe I'll look into that. In the past I love the idea of languages, but I've been really attracted to it. psychology, cool. I've changed some assets sustainability, yeah. working in publishing somehow, but not as an artist. Yeah, I guess... You mean like any other... any other function at a publisher? I guess what I like about publisher... about the idea of like a publisher is that they're like... they've been... publishing has been around for so long. It... it feels... you know, like they've been... they've been having a hard time because of all the, the um, because of the internet um, but it does feel like somehow like it's a pretty solid industry still <laughs> yeah thanks Rick <laughs> I hope so too like either the co I'm honestly I'm I would be fine with um, Netherrealm's not making a lot of money ever um, as long as I can pay my bills um, so I wouldn't mind either if like my commissions um, blew up or something or like the D&D packs and then I would just be doing Netherrealm's as like a passion project like I would not mind I do not need um, Netherrealm's to make money to keep being interested in it it's just that because the commissions have been uh, slow and like not able to support me fully yet, um, I have been gear like investing into getting Nether Realms to generate some income just so it can like all pile up onto each other to like create the minimum income that I need to like keep going. So, um, so yeah, anything, if anything blows up, I would be happy. Oh, so you're, Nika, you're actually, you've, uh, you're good at graphic design. I feel like I'm so glad that I had some, um, 
colleagues that could um, show me like the basics of it when I was still, you know, um, starting out as an employee because, um, man, I am still so bad at it, but at least I know the basics now. I like your positive spirit, Rick. You're already focusing on uh, inflation slowly fading away. Or like, lessening again. Well, as long as you love graphic design, then I think um, you'll be fine. Like, I, I just, I never really, <laughs> I never really uh, got into it. So, it's for me, it's uh, a necessity, a necessary evil that I put up with, basically. Wait, Rick, are you from the States or are you, um, or are you Dutch? No, wait, from your name, I thought you were, um, Dutch. If I work in 3D, have you looked up art molding or animation pebbles? Yeah, um, I um, I know how to do 3D. I use it in my images because it's like a fast way for me to like make environments and stuff. And I also I don't um, I don't enjoy doing line art for uh, backgrounds. Um, so I like I base them on 3D and then paint over them. Uh, which is what makes it feasible for me to actually like um, paint the backgrounds <laughs> to to have like a base in 3D. Um, but I would never dare to um, get into somebody's 3D line 3D pipeline anymore because my 3D files are a mess because they're only for me, um, and I'm not a neat modeler. I never was. Also in school, um, like 3D modeling, I did game design, but like 3D modeling was like my worst class. Um, and uh, it took me a long time to, to actually manage to get through classes without a lot of help from my peers. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, going to, uh, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel confident. And I also feel like if I were not able to do this freelancing art stuff anymore, um, I feel like working employed, I'm not sure if I'll feel about this differently, like later on, but I feel like, um, working as an employee, it would, um, kind of like show me every day it would remind me every day of what I wouldn't be able to do basically so I feel like at least for a time I would want to if I weren't able to do the, the freelancing thing I would able I would want to be able to close off from art for a while <laughs> just to kind of like mourn um plus you know it doesn't it doesn't bring me joy if we're going all Marie Kondo, so that's a really long answer for no, I won't. <laughs> um, I studied game art in uh, Breda here in Holland. I think 
it, it used to be called IGAD, um, and now it's called something else. I don't know. But it was a really good school. It was really hard work. It was a lot of all-nighters and uh, grueling, grueling days, working through vacations. Um, and that was, you know, fine to learn a lot of stuff in a short time, but uh, a lot of people with burnouts as well. Yes, Buos! Buos, Buos, whatever. That's the one. But I was there before it was cool. Or was I there? Ten years ago. Ten years ago! Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough school. I am amazed that I still I, I managed to uh, to finish it in uh, uh, four years and three months instead of four years, um, which I am uh, more proud of. The more I hear about other people's journeys through uh, that kind of uh, that that that. Um, education, I guess. It's kind of funny, right, that, um, that we, like, assumed you were Dutch from your name. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of funny how that goes. I was almost gonna, like, speak to you on in, about like Dutch ask you if you if you had celebrated Sinterklaas or whatever and you would have maybe no idea of what I was talking about oh really you do you too that's really or Liga. huh um that's kind of fun. Actually, oh no, maybe. Oh, I was thinking like because um, I I went to um, I went to uh, a reunion this summer, and I was thinking for a second if I had maybe met a Slovenian um, art teacher, but um, she was. I don't think she was Slovenian. She was like. Someone who spoke British English because she had lived there for a while, but she was from a different country. That's why I was thinking maybe she was Slovenian. Um, but I don't think she was. And she wasn't an art teacher anyway. Oh, really? You guys... Do you guys like still do that, or um, like from your from your Belgian ancestry, or um, is that a a states thing? Oh yeah, if it's a he, the the, the person I talked to was definitely not a he. <laughs> No way! Oh, that's so funny that there's still like... Wait, so what does, um, what does Saint Nick 
look like? Is he like dressed in red, uh, but like um, not? Uh, is he like thin, like uh, like uh, Caesar class instead of like fat, like the like um, uh, Santa with like the yellow cross thing on top? I'm gesturing here, but you can't see me, obviously. Okay, Miklos, am I, am I like pronouncing that right or is it like different? It does sound kind of like Saint Nicolas, which is kind of funny. Miklos. <laughs> totally butchering your language right now. Oh, that's so funny. Is there like a big um, Dutch ancestry community in Wisconsin? Is that why it's still a thing there? Do you think? You know what also threw me off? Like the fact that you, unless you're like called differently in real life, but the fact that um, you have like Rick with one K instead of like a CK, because that's also really Dutch. Miklaus. Okay. I will have to ask you to pronounce it um, when we like speak to each other one time. So I know what it actually should sound like. emphasis that's hilarious i'm sorry i'm just picturing like all the ways it's kind of funny how um how it's also really difficult for people even like germans to um to pronounce van gogh where they're like van gogh no no it's like van gogh <laughs> it's like yeah that's kind of it but not really Right, so a lot of Germanic, I guess, still survives in Wisconsin. It's really cool um, to like notice uh, or like learn about um, how cultures have like spread spread across the world um, and how they apparently still influence each other. I never, I really, I am so surprised to hear that there's like some kind of St. Nick's Day uh, all the way in the States. Because it's like, honestly, it's been uh, less popular here ever since uh, the whole Black Pete thing. 
uh, happened. So now companies are kind of like afraid to even advertise with uh, Saint Nick. I mean, it still happens, but it's not as popular. But um, Saint Nick's has really been like kind of like our our holiday, my family's holiday for a long time. So we just we still celebrate it the way we did, except, you know, without Black Pete, obviously. So your kids are lucky, right? Because they get presents twice. I feel like here in Holland, um, I'm not sure what it, 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 it's it been like for like the past five years, but until 10 years ago, it was definitely definitely were, uh, the case where like Santa Claus was like for gift giving. Um, and uh, you would um, definitely, yeah, get, like give the, give your gifts, especially children, um, during Santa Claus and then Christmas um, was mostly for just like kind of like Thanksgiving, you know, having like uh, a lot of food with family, spending some time together, just having a good time. Um, and um, there wasn't really like a thing with um, presents that much. Um, I feel like, like my mom didn't really... Um, feel that strongly about Santa Claus, I think, uh, I feel like. So for her, we all, we always like celebrate Christmas more, but then with my dad, Santa Claus was always a big thing, big happening. And I feel like with the, like with the controversy lately, it's been shifting towards, um, uh, towards Christmas, um, though for us, for like my family and my, my in-laws and stuff, um, it's still mostly Santa Claus is um, presents and then Christmas is food and family time. And then Santa Claus is also well, less, less about food, I think. Christmas is way more about food. And then Santa Claus is more about like family time, but being together and mostly eating sweets, like the speculas and uh, kind of notes and that kind of stuff. Wait, what do you mean? Identity crisis for which guys? For, for Saint Nick? For your Nick? Or for your equivalent of a Black Pete? Oh, like so. Okay, I get it now. Wait, so Grandpa Frost, is he like tied to a certain date like St. Nick and, and Christmas are? Or, um, because I always felt like he was just like, it's kind of funny that you have Grandpa Frost, but it's not Jack Frost, right? Or is that a variation on Jack Frost?
interesting. As it, honest, like I said, I love these interconnected things. Like one of my favorite things I learned about um, like Romans and Christianity is that like winter was always um, like twenty the the twenty fifth of December or this that time of year was always like a, a special date for um, for like pagans and then it got turned into like Christianity and just got like adapted into Christmas with all its uh, with all its meaning. I love learning learning about that, those kinds of things. It's also actually, I don't think about it, um, I think we talked about, I, I think I talked about it on like a previous stream, but that's also kind of like how I envisioned the nether realms, like a lot of, um, a lot of the religions in, on our earth have like a grain of truth to them, but they're like based on th actual things from nether realms and then like deformed into um, the religions that we know now. So for example, red um, looks like Anubis from the ancient Egyptians who also um, uh, was kind of like an angel of death where he, you know, he took away the souls from, from the body that they uh, resided in, if I'm, if I'm like quoting it correctly, but um, I feel like in Nether Realms, um, red is kind of like what Anubis is based on, but Anubis has just, I mean, red has just like faded into obscurity. Um, and, um, instead they have like Anubis, which they think is the truth, but actually red is the truth. Oh, Stargate. God, that, that's um, that's something that I uh, that's one that I still need to watch, and I'm hearing a lot about it, and that's really cool and whatever. Um, is it? Do you know if it's like on any um, streaming services? I think that's what what's been like holding me back on like putting it on an actual list somewhere is that I don't I'm not really I haven't really looked into where you can actually stream it maybe you can't Oh well, I'll I'll have a look if it's still somewhere. But why do you ask? Is there because this uh, is apparently something relevant? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that sounds really interesting. I had no idea that that was 
the premise. I'll watch it soon then because that sounds like, I don't know, something I'd, uh, I would like to draw inspiration from. Did the series come before the movie or the other way around? Which one should I watch first if I if I track it all down? All right, thanks for the tip. Cause you know, next thing you know, I'll be watching the series first and be all confused. Is it anything like it? Have you ever seen the show Firefly? Somehow, like the, the bits and pieces that I have seen of it remind me of that, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because they, they were like made in the same era. Yeah, I love it too. It sucks that it never I, uh, a friend told me like, oh, you need, really need to watch it, but don't get like too attached because they never renewed it for like a, I don't know, second season, third season, what was it again? How many seasons did they make? Too little, anyway. Right. More technology, alien military. Interesting. It's kind of funny because that's all like, if you tell me like, oh, let's go watch an alien movie, I would be like, yeah, okay, if you want to. But um, everyone's always so enthusiastic about, same for like military movies, like, yeah, okay, fine. But, um, Everybody's so, so into Stargate that, um, I guess, I guess I'll give it a chance and then maybe get hooked. Oh, maybe I'm mixing the two up. Let me be honest. I might be mixing up Battlestar Galactica and Stargate. I guess I'll just um, watch and then, if I can find it, um, and then I'll know what I'm talking about. All 
All right, I'm going to finish this panel and then I am going to head off because it's getting near dinner time. I do feel like I've made some headway today though with the ink. Stargate Atlantis. Is that like uh, is that about Atlantis? thinking of the see stargate if i if, if i hear stargate i always have to think of, of, of like the the guy with the golden icon thing symbol on his forehead so i was thinking of this the same the right the right series All right, well, you know, you got me interested anyway, so I'm going to make an effort to uh, actually see it. And then I can be once more more knowledgeable about one of those things that everybody's talking about, but I have never seen. And there's still a lot of that left. Honestly, like I still need to play Dragon Age too, because <laughs> apparently it's all the rage. <laughs> Have you read um, Gideon the Ninth as a sci-fi nerd? Yes, which one are you guessing to? To um, Gideon the Ninth or Dragon Age? Oh, well, if you like sci fi, um, then uh, I think you'll like Gideon the Ninth. Um, there's like Nona, um, so there's like Gideon, then there's um, Harrow. Okay, yes, the Dragon Age, okay. Um, so there's uh, Gideon the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth, and then um, Nona the Ninth just came out. Um, and I did not think I was, like I was really attracted to the cover. Um, that's why I picked it up in the first place. Um, I, am, I am selectively into sci-fi. Um, but not like a huge sci-fi nerd. I like fantasy better. Um, but Gideon I did really like, as well as Nona. And I think you might like it too. I think the tagline was um, butch lesbians in space, I think. I think Gideon will, hmm, will Gideon be suitable to get back into reading? I'm not sure. Maybe. I think it took a while for me to like get into it, but maybe if you're like a sci-fi nerd then it'll be easier. Um, 
yeah, you know, if you could, you know, if you wanted to, you could give it a try, but. I like, um, I like reading, um, because it's, it's so, it so forces you to like, let go of, um, of all your thoughts about like screens and like when I'm, when I'm, uh, watching a movie still or, um, or watching a series, I'm still like on my phone doing other stuff, which I shouldn't, but, um, I still gravitate towards it. And with reading, it's just, uh, you're just sucked into it and you have nothing else to do with your hands and mind and eyes than read, um, which is a really nice mindfulness exercise, I guess, if nothing else. Yeah, same. Uh, I even have a bunch of books that I'm reading at the same time so I can pick and choose what I feel like. At that moment, because sometimes I want something lighthearted and sometimes I want to like get into a story and I am? Really? Oh gosh, this is a... Uh... Oh yeah, I did. Uh, I, I added like a couple more songs to the list um, today, right before I started streaming. There was some Dragon Age music in there. But I can't call myself a connoisseur yet. I do not know what I'm talking about yet. <laughs> exactly, that's why I'm saying yet, because, uh, I feel like people like to throw around a lot of shade for some for someone like oh you you haven't watched this yet or oh you haven't seen it yet it's like do you have time who has the time to watch everything that's popular and like keep up with everything I don't I have to pick and choose What's the current stuff in your opinion? I think Wednesday is popular. Dragon Age, obviously. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Arcane, oh yeah. Squid Game, I, I still haven't seen Squid Game either. I don't know if I want to, to be honest. Um, 
I feel like, I don't know, seems too doomsday-ish for my mood right now. Can't take it. Wait, what's Andor? What's SW? You guys are speaking in tongues for me. Oh, there's new Star Wars stuff? I had no idea. Is it on Disney Plus? Huh. Oh, that's fine. I uh, we have like a, a major a major not the biggest, but a pretty big uh, Star Wars Mandalorian thing fan in our family, but I haven't heard him uh, talking about it yet, which is kind of interesting because we were there last night to celebrate Santa Claus. Guess we didn't get to it in the chaos of all the presents and stuff. Was it? I'm, I'm hearing really, really different things from Rings of Power. Some people think it's like really meh and some people think it's really good. So it's a... Uh, it's one that can divide opinions apparently. expectations <laughs> it's probably beautiful though like with all the cash that they dropped on it huh well sometimes you know it's worth it for like the beauty alone. Though it's kind of kind of cool to hear from you, Rick, that you really loved it so much. Maybe I will too. Because sometimes, like I, I go into watching a series with like really low expectations, like oh everybody hates it, and then I'm like, why? Why does everybody hate it? I I love this. Oh yeah, lore, like, I love lore, and I love um, working on it for my own story, and like making sure that it all fits together, uh, but I'm not sure if I'm like a huge stickler for lore in other people's work, if you know what I mean. It's like, oh, I, I can really just enjoy... Um, a timeline or I mean a story and then for, for like the characters and 
if the lore doesn't match up or whatever, then I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. It worked. I think Avatar is like one of those movies that I completely fell in love with that everybody hated. Oh, all right. Okay, well, I'm curious to um, see that one too now so I can have an opinion on it. I wasn't so interested in seeing it at first, but after hearing your discussions, now I am. So I guess it's a good thing that Christmas break is coming up because it sounds like I have a lot of TV watching to do. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that like all the lore can be stifling sometimes. It's it's what I run, to, run into every time I, I think like, oh, it will be cool to, um, to like do a new interpretation of, of, of whatever, Norse mythology or whatever. Um, and then I feel like, yeah, but there's all these details and stories and whatever, and it's already set in stone, so I don't know if I can diverge from it. But I don't know, maybe it makes sense to me. It will make sense to me uh, once I watch the actual thing. All right. <laughs> Fine, fine, I'm watching the thing. Okay, I am going to save these for another day. Only six more pages to go. Six and a half done. Not bad. Man, you guys are making me curious to watch the thing. All right. Um, I'm going to head off. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, thanks for giving me all these amazing series tips. If it, you guys are filling up my Christmas break. And hopefully I'll see you guys next stream. I'm really missing like a, um, uh, a uh, that person is typing feature like I'm 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 really missing it more and more because um, I don't know if I'm like oh okay are they like done are they gone are they are they not typing are they not planning on saying anything I have no idea anyway um, thanks so much and um, yeah see you around on Twitter on Mastodon on anywhere else <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? Okay, I uh, I will drop it in uh, Twitch's uh, suggestion box at some to at some point. All right. Okay, I'm leaving because otherwise I never will. Um, thanks, and see you guys around. Bye.